counterweight Tom Nelson good. If in doubt, put it lower rather than higher. Right. Yeah. Because what you don't want is then to put the telescope on top. For it to and it would be top heavy, you want it to be bottom heavy. Because otherwise it would just swing around. That's and right. even if it doesn't bash you, it's going to bash yourself. That's right. So, you've got to get it like that. This axis. Now, when you're going to put anything on, make sure both axes are nice and firm and locked. Yeah, so you don't get anything flopping uh, about damaging things. So, uh, most telescopes have some kind of dovetail bar that you mount them on with. Yeah? This, is, this is the actual dovetail bar here. You can see it's uh, wider at the bottom than it is at the top. And there's a corresponding groove here with screws to hold it in place. Yeah? So, make sure it's nice and flush there so you can get it in easy. Get the telescope. Slide it in. Can everyone see okay? Yep. Slide it in. Put it about halfway. Make sure it's making good contact with the bottom. Make sure it's flush with the bottom there. Sometimes it feels like it's in, <coughs> but it's to one side or to the other. And it won't grip it properly and the telescope will pull down. So make sure it's nicely seated. Once it's all in place, oh, then just tighten up the knobs. Make sure, then let go. It's nice and stable. <coughs> now, telescope and counterweight are now attached. We have to balance it so we're not straining the motors or ourselves. So, there is a debate as to which order they, it can be done in, but I don't think it makes a difference. Because once the scope is properly balanced, it will be balanced in both axes. It makes so the phase how do you know you're only using one weight, not two? Right, um, these, right. I know roughly the weight of the telescope. And I know roughly the weight of the counterweight. That's, that's five this, this, this uh, five and a half kilograms, and this I estimate to be about three and a half or four kilograms. So they're in the same sort of ballpark. So what you will do, um, I've undone one of the axes, in this case the right ascension, the RA, and I'm just going to let it go. That's nicely balanced. If it wasn't balanced, it would lean to one side or the other. So that's too far on the telescope side. And, well, it's not quite enough, that's about right there anyway, so if it was too heavy on this side, it would be dragging down to one side or the other. You simply turn it sideways and move this up or down until when you let it go, it just stays completely still. When I, once I reach a spot like that, what I usually do is just turn it off, put it to another angle and let it go. See? In that case, I can still see this still slightly top heavy. So I'll move it forward just a smidgen. Let's try it again. Same. Not good. Let's try it again. And, and these bands on the telescope, is that, do they sit in the middle of the telescope? You've got right, them we're going to come to that in a minute. That's the way you balance okay. the actual telescope. Yeah. So now, in whichever position I let it go in, it stays still straight away. Um, I also usually give it another test sometimes. I push it with my little finger. If it bends the little finger, it's not light enough. So if I can do that with, with my fingers, it's gonna put no strain on the mouth whatsoever. It's nicely balanced. So that's one axis. And we'll do the same thing with the other. So we unlock the other, turn it sideways and see what happens. It's going down to one side. So I need to move the telescope this way. Now, some telescopes only have a bar. Um, like, some telescopes have a bar attached directly on it, like this. Some telescopes have rings around them, like this one here. Um, you can balance it either or, right? So, if you've only got a bar, then you undo these whilst keeping a good grip on the telescope. Undo them slightly, just enough for the telescope to move, slide up and down the rails there, yeah? backwards and forwards. That's one way of doing it. In this case, because it's in rings, I've got much more space to move the telescope up and down using the rings than I do this bar. Yeah? Usually if the telescope's got only a bar on it, the bar will be a lot longer to accommodate for balance. Yeah? So in this case, let me just undo it again. I thought it was mirror heavy, which it is. Okay, it's mirror heavy. So, I'm going to look it off. 
Actually, let me do it this way around so you can see a bit more. These two screws here will loosen up these two rings and they will open up like a hinge. Yeah. I want to move, uh, the tube is uh, heavy on one side, so it's heavy towards the mirror side which is here. You can see it moving down, so I need to move it in that direction. Right. So let me just lock that off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to slide just, the same, just in the same way as I did with the dovetail bar. I'll slowly slacken those off just enough for me to be able to move the tube within the rings. Now, to test it, I can re-tighten. doesn't move. Test the axis again. Now it's a little bit front heavy. So again, I'll move it back in the direction but a little bit less now. Loosen. Move a little bit. Oh, good enough. Should be okay. Tighten. Okay. Same sort of test as last time. Seems fine to me. Okay. Now I can tighten it properly. Move it back to the home position. It's ready to go. Just one question. Yeah. Um, does it does it matter which way the eyepiece is facing? Uh, what for here? No, mm -hmm. it doesn't. Uh, that's um, that's a matter of comfort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you can turn the beauty of rings with a Newtonian mm -hmm. is that you can <coughs> position the eyepiece once you want to do it a little bit. Because obviously um, it depends on what you are observing and sometimes... Which direction of the sky. Yeah, you yeah. balance it and then you realize that you are actually fine that way. But not in, in but the other, not direction, the other yeah, way. Because, and then the eyepiece and could end up here. Exactly, here. so you're going to observe like this or That's like right. this. Very often. <laughs> Right. Uh, very often what you'll be observing will be somewhere in the southern horizon. Yeah? So, if you keep that in mind, once you've, before you actually begin your observing session, if you're wondering where's the eyepiece going to go if you have a Newtonian, I mean, you don't have such a concern if it's a Sweet Cows Korean or a refractor because it's always going to be at the back, yeah, so yeah. it's going to be somewhere around here. Yep. So, just simply point under your axes, just point the telescope roughly where it's going to be that way. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. okay. I don't much mm -hmm. fancy looking up into the telescope huh? like this, so I'll rotate it up to here. And then you balance it again, exactly. obviously. Yeah, so according to what you can do, you can just look it off quickly. Okay, I'm going to be observing over there, so, you know, Mars should be somewhere around about there when the, when the uh, sun sets tonight, so I can just undo that slightly. Mm -hmm. A bit more. Turn it around. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a lot more comfortable for me 